Hey everybody, I just wanted to promote an upcoming event that I had a small part in. Uh, the upcoming event is Canonia. It is uh, a new dance production from Inspirata Dance Project here in Twin Falls, Idaho. So obviously if you live here in southern Idaho, if you live in the Twin Falls area, please come. It'll be the 23rd through the 25th. Tickets are $15 and it'll be at CSI Fine Arts Center, the College of Southern Idaho Fine Arts Center. Uh, I have seen numerous productions by this dance production, and I'm always blown away. And last year, I had the really great uh, fortune to work with the artistic director, Cynthia Jones, who is behind this whole thing. Uh, I can't remember how long ago it was, but I, I remember I had reached out to her to talk to her potentially about doing an interview and talk about dance and uh, modern dance, contemporary dance, and, and how various ideas and states of feeling and being can be conveyed through dance. Uh, last year, Cindy, Cynthia, and I uh, decided to collaborate instead on three interviews. Uh, we spoke with three refugees in this community. Uh, Twin Falls is a little unique for Idaho in that uh, we have a refugee program here at the local college, the community college. And so there's people from all over the world that have, have a whole variety of experiences that they often I don't think get to share with others. And so Cindy and I decided that what we would do is we would interview uh, several of these refugees that were willing to talk about their stories. Um, I would uh, facilitate that. I would interview them, record the interviews. And on my part, I released them as episodes. So last year, I released three episodes. The first was with Samra Kolum. The second was with Melitza Popovich. And the third was with Leah Babayan. Each of these incredible human beings, each of these incredible women, uh, having these discussions, Cindy and I sitting down with them, speaking with them about their life story of what happened in their home countries, what led them to, to leaving and coming to the United States as refugees, to be able to have these engaging, emotional conversations with these women was a real gift. And so what you'll hear is that in the dance production, there will be three to four pieces that feature audio from these interviews. Uh, that was the whole point. Cindy and I would be collaborating on this. So after a year or more of Cindy working on this project, of me contributing in the small way that I have, uh, I'll finally, and we will all finally be able to see the fruits of this labor. Whether it was the story of Samra when she was a child having to flee Bosnia during the Bosnian War, uh, or Melitza, when she had to leave Serbia uh, during the collapse of that nation, uh, or Leah Babayan, when she, uh, as an Armenian uh, woman, as an Armenian child, had to flee uh, Azerbaijan during the pogroms that, that happened there. Uh, whatever it was, I mean, it just, it's, it's just... If anything we could learn from these experiences, and if there's anything I learned from my interviews with them and with working with Cindy and, and what I expect to come out of this dance production is the so-called divide or differences between all of us um, are illusionary. They're narratives that we tell ourselves. And that what could happen here happened there. We're not different. We may think that we're in a, a safe place where these types of things don't happen. But what I heard over and over again from these women is the same types of language, the same types of rhetoric and political uh, games that were being played in their own countries from where they're from is in some part happening here. And not that it would happen in the same way here as it happened there, but we need to be very aware of the moment that we're in. And we need to reclaim our humanity in the face of bigotry, division, racism, and all kinds of phobias and, and various ways that people try to separate ourselves from the other, as it were. Uh, you can go to idpkoinonia.brownpapertickets.com. I'll put a link to that down below so you can get tickets ahead of time. And also... If you stick around for a few minutes, you'll hear short segments that I'm going to put here at the end of the video of each of the interviews that I did with Samra, Melitza, and Leah. 
and I'll be putting links to each of those episodes in the description as well. I would just ask that you check those out. I am really so pleased that I could play some part in this production um, to see it all come to fruition is going to be uh, really satisfying and I'm sure an incredibly um, emotional experience for me. So yeah, go check out that uh, production. I'm really excited. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for taking uh, for, for working with me on this. I, I really, uh, I love everything that I've, I've been able to do with you up to this point. So anyway, here's a few segments of my interviews and, uh, yeah, go buy some tickets and I'll see you at the show. It was so emotionally draining. Um, and I don't think people realize that, especially this Bosnians have been in the Magic Valley for over 20 years. And so, when this started, I'm telling you guys, it felt like deja vu. It's like all of a sudden you're like, you have animosity towards us? I thought we were working as hard as we could. I thought we were doing the things that were expected of us to learn your language, to learn your customs, to um, to be productive members of your society. And I believe we've done a very good job. And when all of a sudden this started to erupt, it was heartbreaking. It felt like... Um, it felt like again you didn't belong. It was it was really hard emotionally because you just wanted to look at him and say, "But we've been here." Like so, this is how it, again. It's just it's deja vu. Like that's how our war started. All of a sudden, we are to blame for all the miscauses and all the troubles in your world. We are somehow to blame, and it felt like it was happening again. And when I went to that forum that was at CSI, oh, I sat with all my friends that were from Bosnia, and we just you could feel the nervousness. And what was this forum exactly? It was a just forum. They just context. people were just so concerned about how do they vet refugees? How are you going to be making sure that we, as Twin Falls residents, are safe with all these others coming in? And we're so concerned about possible um, terrorism. I guess I don't really know where this all stemmed from, and I don't know how it got so quickly. It was like a wildfire. I felt like it was like. All of a sudden, somebody sparked it, and it just went like crazy. And nobody wanted to take ownership of it to say, "We need to, we need to hold on for a second. Let's look at what has happened in our community and how successful we've been within our integration." Why? And and it was it was just hard, you know. And so the forum was attended to talk about to explain ourselves, and that's the part that was really offensive. It justify was like your existence. justify my existence in this community is how I felt about the experience. It was like, well, how much crime? do they do com commit compared to the rest of the residents here? How much money are they taking from our schools? Um, how long are they utilizing our services? And all I could think of is my parents got a job here in a month, you mm -hmm. know, and we've been contributing to other people. And I understand hardships. I'm a supporter of people needing needing assistance when they have hardships. And so we had to explain our, our, our existence here. And it was really heartbroken. It was really um, th hard for me because I experienced it with my friends. And yeah, my friends, and it was, it felt like a, like, betrayal. Yeah. It was not able to function in a big city. It was terrible, a complete anarchy. Uh, mm -hmm. Teaching was almost impossible. Kids were wild, and parents were taking care of existence. We were receiving probably five dollars a month as a salary because of the mm. money devaluating. Is it a good word? Devaluating. Yeah, devaluating. Demand. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the stores were completely without food, and uh, I, I'm not sure how we made it through those years. Mm. So I decided to spend summer in our old. Uh, the house in the village, and that's where I re-met my husband. We were born in that same village, and uh, we went to school together, elementary school and kindergarten, but then he <laughs> went to Bosnia to study psychology. Hmm. And when the war started, he was pushed to come back to Serbia, uh, and he was a school psychologist in the village. So we immediately made a decision to <laughs> run away and escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We exchanged experiences and it was just impossible for both of us. So 
soon after we met, we decided I stayed there and I was an, an art teacher in that small mm-hmm. village. Okay. So it was continuously difficult economically. We didn't have money. As I said, it was constantly cold, uh, no gas, no electricity. He was pulled to war for uh, maybe several months. So I was alone there. It was just terrible. Mm -hmm. Very, very unpleasant memories. And as I said, I'm not sure how we (laughs) went through. Do you have a hard time remembering the details of those? those Emotionally. Yeah, like um, I think sometimes when people have very difficult experiences, your brain tends to block it out. That's what I said. It's it's a certain amnesia. After we came here, I probably subconsciously wanted to erase all the right. memories. Yeah. But it's part of my life and it helped us grow up. So after, <laughs> you know, when you look back, you actually perceive it as valuable experience. Yeah. That is just incorporated in structure of our existence now. Feeling subhuman stays with you. That is your trauma. You know, being, re- being regarded as disposable, like the lowest of the lowest when it comes to human life, even more disposable than material objects. Like there's art that's more valued than human life. Mm. Yeah. There's like Jesus cheese. There's like that... <laughs> cheese that has the <laughs> jesus's face on it or something yeah yeah, uh, yeah and no disrespect to jesus like jesus jesus is my is my friend you know but <laughs> no, what i'm saying is there's there's pieces of cheese that's valued more than human life yeah that you know people will go like in the streets and like save that cheese you know people will protect the cheese yeah. over life yeah. yeah so when you in your psyche when you Come to grips, you know, and, and imagine this, like, I'm a kid. I'm a kid that just is the most, you know, naive, like, I'm just like feeling things like, oh, that does that when I touch it. And right. that dandelion's magic, mm-hmm. you know, like, when you're a kid, you don't think dandelions are weeds, they're magic, they're like wands. And, and your wishes are supposed to come true, you know, when you when you blow on those dandelions. But you're a kid and you're just in this, you're sensing the world and you're piecing together what you can even remember day to day because you go to sleep and you wake up like you only store a tiny bit of your experience because you're a kid. And you're eating and you're playing and you're, you're not thinking about it. You're just in the process of just being there and being a kid. And then all of a sudden you're shown, you're not told, but you're shown that you're not worthy of, of life or you're not, your humanity is negotiable mm. or you're, maybe you don't understand your own humanity, but you can see that these adult people in your life, they're shook. And these people are like pillars to you. They're, they're unshakable, you know. Your grandparents and your parents, if they look at you a certain way, they're gods when you're a kid. And when you see the adults shook and when you see that they're like becoming smaller and dimmer and fearful and hiding and minimizing themselves, minimizing their humanity, their, their wholeness, then you just learn naturally that, oh, okay, we're, we're, we're those people. We're disposable. We're the, we're the disposables. No one has to tell you. And then you see that because you become homeless and no one cares. And your family members are slaughtered and that's normal. That's like normalized. 